Okay, guys, I'm coming at you again. Another video about the PC charger, the Ruber PC charger. All right, I got the screws for the uh, slide pull. You see, I got them on both sides. There's no magazine in here. I already cleared the chamber. Chamber's clear. These are a little longer than the stock ones. These I got on eBay. I think they were like, um, I forget. They were, I'll see if I can put a link up about them. Now, as for the screws, these don't come with screws. I was able to go to my friendly hardware store, which here it's called Lowe's. And uh, I'll give you the size of those screws in a second. They are metric, by the way. Okay, here is the size of the screws. I don't know if you can make that out. They are M5-80 times 16. Now, they're a little longer. I think they're about a millimeter and a half longer. So you're going to either have to grind the screw down or you're going to have to use little wee lock washers inside of these handles. What I did is I put two lock washers in here and I put a dab of Loctite on the screw as well. Now, my best advice for you, in order to find a lock washer small enough to fit inside here, you're going to probably have to buy a set. You're going to have to buy a lock washer set. You know, which I'm, what I'm, I mean by a set is they come in like real tiny little ones, all the way up to big ones. And um, I put two in, and it works out perfectly. And with it, with just one drop of, of uh, blue, blue or red, I use blue in here, uh, thread locker. Now, as for the muzzle tip, as they say, you learn by doing. This is very. This is my first muzzle break I ever bought, and I made the mistake of not knowing about these before I bought them. This is aluminum, which is supposed to be a no-no. <clears throat> and um, this is an eBay muzzle break. This was twenty four ninety nine on eBay, which it's it's um, CNC machined and it's made out of solely out of aluminum which people don't recommend that because they could shatter. Um, the muzzle blast could take bits and pieces off. It might be dangerous for people that are standing around the gun. So we're going to take this off. I ordered a steel muzzle brake off of um, a company. Once that comes in, we'll put that one on here and this one here. We'll throw it in, we'll put it in a pit for it's going to live everlasting. It's going to live its life out in a bottomless pit or in my junk drawer. So it's like I said, you know, it's like everything I do, I, you, know, you, you learn by doing. You learn from experience. So right now, this is just on here for show. But uh, the other one is going to be, it's almost identical to this. It's a tank style, but that one's going to, the, the one I got coming in is made out of steel. And I want to also tell you guys another story. I ordered a muzzle brake. Last night I went on, I don't want to knock cheaper than dirt because they, they, they've been good to me. But I, they, uh, they have one of these, not, not one of these made out of aluminum, but they have a muzzle brake like this made out of steel on cheaper than dirt. The one that I ordered off another company. So I put my, my, my car credit card number in. I went to check out. And um, a pop-up came on the screen that this item cannot be shipped to Pennsylvania. Hey, I got. They sold me 
thousands of rounds of ammo. They sold me a magazine that can hold 33 rounds of 9 millimeter, but they won't sell you a muzzle brake in the state of Pennsylvania. Makes no sense at all. So I went on. I said, you know, I, you know then once that happened, I was like, okay, I've got to see this out now. Okay, because I really didn't want to spend more money on another muzzle brake. So I said to myself, all right, I'm in it now. i got to see this thing out. So I went on another website. The same muzzle brake was for sale. It was maybe, I think it was like $8 more. So I ordered that. I checked out. So far, no problem whatsoever. I'll let you guys know if I get another muzzle brake. Now, I looked up laws here in Pennsylvania for muzzle brakes, and there's absolutely no laws saying the muzzle brakes are illegal in Pennsylvania. So I don't know what's going on with cheaper than dirt. Maybe they're more strict than others, but there is no laws here in Pennsylvania that say that you cannot have a muzzle brake on your gun. Now, uh, one of my lasers is supposed to be in today. We're going to put a laser on this. Uh, if it comes in early enough, I'll put the laser on it and I'll finish this video. Okay, guys, the laser came in. Now, the whole grip, believe it or not, the whole grip I got for the AK, it's still held up in Ohio somewhere. So it was supposed to be here today. Now it's supposed to be here tomorrow. And then I guess when tomorrow comes, it'll supposed to be here on Wednesday. And since uh, since uh, this strong wind we're going to have around here, you know, tractor trailers can't travel on the road with heavy wind because they'll get blown over. So then it'll probably be here possibly on Thursday. But then again, no, wait a minute. There's another storm coming on Thursday. So it should be delayed till Friday, two weeks. I got this off of Midway USA. I'm going on two weeks. I'm waiting for this whole grip off Midway USA. You know, unfortunately, guys, living around here, this is like living on one of Captain Cook's islands out in the Pacific Ocean somewhere. There's nothing here. There's nothing. Anything you want here, you got to send out for it. So let me show you the laser. Now, this is a blue laser. I got two of them. I got one for this one and one for the, uh, the Smith & Wesson uh, folding rifle. These are made by a veteran-owned company. Tactic and Armament. Let me see here. These come with um, these little wee Allen wrenches. Wait do you see how this charges. I like the way this guy charges. Why isn't anything easy? Everything's hard, you know? Why is everything going to be hard? has a charger with a USB and uh, that plugs into your USB port and this has a magnetic Are you guys freezing on your end because I'm freezing on my end so, so it has a magnetic charger and that goes on top of there so you don't have to plug this in. All you got to do is just put it on top of there. There's a button on the side here. Um, now, I would say those little Allen wrenches they give you, that's for the um, windage. 
and the one up there is probably the elevation. So what I'll have to do is I'll put my nine millimeter laser cartridge in this and I'll line that laser up with the cartridge laser. So, and these, these are small enough to go on a handgun, you know, they're perfect for underneath handgun, like on a Glock 17, you can put these on perfectly. So, all right, all you're going to do is give this a slight little tap like this. You don't even got to put a lot of pressure on these buttons, guys. These, these are nice. These are really nice. Man, is that messing with my camera? Just touch it. This is off. See, all, all you gonna do is slight little, slight little, little bit of pressure on it. Just, just a slight touch. So you know. The nice thing about having that on something like this is you don't need the shoulder brace. You know, that's all you got to do. You just got to raise your hand up here. You know, if you're, you're ready to shoot the thing. Very little pressure it takes, guys, to hit that switch. Very little pressure. Oh, you know what? I just noticed something. There's a button on the other side, too. I didn't know that. So you have a button on both sides. So I have big hands. I have long fingers. So, oh, that makes it, that's a game changer right there. That's even better. Because all you got to do, presto, and you're in business just like that. So you don't got to reach up on the, on that side there, you know, Just watch my finger, watch my finger. Perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. So we're in business. Yeah. Like I said, these are, this, this one here, I got some aluminum. I didn't know this is the first muzzle brake I ever bought. Um, it might hold up and I don't, I don't, I don't really don't think a nine millimeter, I mean, I can, I can't see it, but you know, from what I read, it makes me afraid now to have this aluminum muzzle brake on here. So I still haven't heard, I, I still haven't got a confirmation that it shipped to me yet because the company won't be back till Wednesday. So, if they don't ship if they don't ship these to Pennsylvania, I'm gonna have to stick with this. So here we go. All right. I'll show you guys that one more time. And these these are screws. These aren't Allen wrenches. Comes with two screws. There's, there's springs behind these screws here. So when you're taking that apart, when you take it out of the box, it'll come in a box like this. Like there's a wedding ring in here or something. Why is everything so hard? Honest to God. You know, why can't these companies make stuff easy? It's everything, everything hard, it seems like. What is this? Tape somewhere or something? Is it tape closed? See, they make it like this. That way, when you pop it open, the stuff will come flying out. It'll drop on the ground and break. Then you go go buy another one. <laughs> 
That's why they make it like this. You know, there's there's actually scholars, guys, come from Harvard and Cambridge University where they sit for hours in a big room. There's 20, 30 of these people in a room, and they sit in these rooms with a great big oval table for hours, and they try to figure out how their company can make more money. And they say, let's make the box hard to open. That way they'll break the contents inside and they'll have to buy another one. Jesus, are you kidding me? All right, this side here, maybe I need to rip that off. You know, because, see this one here, both sides, right? maybe that's what I need to do. I need to cut that off a little bit. Really? There we go. That was the problem. Registration card. They do give you directions. This is called the Battle Beam V1B. The Battle Beam V1B Bomber. That's not a bomber, but that's the name of it right there. Directions and your contents inside, your laser. There's another screw. It, it'll, it'll come assembled with one screw, but they give you another screw in here with a tiny little spring on it. So watch, you don't lose that spring. And then your charging cable. So, we got our grip upgraded, we got our handle for the slide on either side, you know, like if you're walking in the woods, you're hunting, and you, you, you trip, you sprain, your 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 like if you're right-handed, you're going to cock this with your left hand, oh, I hurt my wrist, I can't. Well, you know what? I put these on both sides, so now you can use your right hand, too. Oh, my right hand hurts. I can't use it no more. Well, it doesn't matter. But guess what? I have one of these on the other side, too. And these are extra long, also. They're just probably about maybe may, maybe a 3 sixteenths longer. Hey. There's a button on both sides. I could easily reach up with my index finger. And bam. There you go. So we're still waiting on a tax stamp for this. That's gonna that's, that's gonna take a long time, guys. The ATF takes a long time. They just they drag their feet on that. Now Pennsylvania has a Pennsylvania has a lot of laws in the books, guys, to get rid of these and uh, and the semi-automatic sporting rifles. Pennsylvania is not a free state. So, um, yeah, all you're going to do then, I didn't know there was a button on both sides. So all you're going to do, in my case, my fingers are long, my hands are big. So I'm real happy with this. This isn't even fully charged. Okay, what did I do with my charging cable? That's gone already. Where the hell did that go? I fell on the floor here. So since that's a magnet, this is a magnetic charging cable. All you gotta do. There we go. And once again, this is a veteran-owned company. Tacticon Armament Battle Beam V1.
So, this will be next week, and then we'll scrap this aluminum one and put the steel one on. And uh, then we got to get this out to the range. Okay, you guys. Now, the second laser I put on the Smith & Wesson folding pistol carbine chambered for 9mm. The FPC carbine by Smith & Wesson. I put the laser where the hand grip is, that way there, I can turn the laser on with my thumb. Because if I would put it here, there's no way I could reach it. It's too it's too far up. This would be in the way this um the locking cam would be in the way. So the second best thing is having it up here. So this one needs charged. This one here is dead. So, yeah, this needs charged completely. You know what? Let me plug this in, guys. It's got me wondering now. Okay, I plugged this into the computer. Now, when it's charging, you'll see the little light flashing. So it is, it does need charged. So what we'll do, I'm going to go shave and then uh, we'll check this out. Okay, I shaved a little bit. Uh, this has been charging only for maybe f maybe five, six minutes. And like I said, you hold, uh, the, for, for this application, I put this where my hand grip is. So all I gotta do, reach up my thumb, tap it. So these are ideal guys. These, li these little lasers from this company, they're perfect for a handgun. They're perfect for guns like this because they're small, they're lightweight, and they're really affordable. These weren't that much money at all. And the best thing about this gun here, a lot of you don't know, but what you can do is you can shoot over your shoulder with this gun here. Okay. What you do, you, you set it like this. And with a mirror, you, you know, you know, you can actually do this with this here. That's why that's why the barrel goes in the back like that. But you can actually shoot behind you with this. No, you know what, guys, you, you can't do that. I'm just kidding you. Don't believe that. So, all right. I still think this is one of my favorites. You know, when I saw this, I had to have it because it's a modern, it's one of the modern guns they have today. It, it's just, I just like the way it looks. And like I told you guys before, plastic, man, polymers, they're called polymers of plastics. Polymers is, is the way all guns, all firearms are going to go that way. 